so uh, hi everyone uh, this is going to be session number four of you uh, of unicraft summer of code so what we're going to do here we're going to delve into the uh, binary compatibility layer basically if you're going to visit uh, the uh, documentation that we have basically the guidelines um, or the docs you're going to see there are some uh, there's some info here on application porting so if you go to concepts for example there's something that we call compatibility and this is uh, a document that tells you how um, Unicraft works and what what uh, what the approach is to make uh, Linux executable, so unmodified Linux binaries work on top of uh, Unicraft. So basically, there's something that's called a system called Shim Layer, and this system called Shim Layer uh, is the one that's going to redirect. Um, library call a uh, system called towards the Unicraft core libraries and this would enable unmodified uh, binaries to run on top of Unicraft and basically what we tried uh, the examples we uh, we tried uh, in the first week using CraftKit we're using this so all of these examples if we now switch to the um, uh, so Let's assume we, we, we did the uh, Nginx, right? So if we go here in library Nginx 1.25, uh, if we were to build this, this is actually going to go into a Docker file and this is going to uh, grab the, uh, the actual uh, Nginx binary from the, um, uh, from the remote uh, Docker registry and then run on top of Unicraft. So it's similar to having your binary run on Linux, except that it now runs on, uh, on Unicraft. And let's see how that goes. So for example, here, uh, I have this, uh, if you go to catmain.c, uh, I have this example, uh, this binary, which is, um, uh, this binary is um, um, running uh, on uh, th th this uh, this executable uh, is going to be built into a binary. So, for example, if I'm going to do this, GCC minus uh, uh, O, uh, let's say hello, hello, let's do just hello, main.c, just a sec. This is going to create this hello binary, and if I do it here, you're going to see that this is. Um, uh, this is going to be um, um, used um, in, inside the, the, this is going to print the hello message uh, when this is run. If I'm going to S trace this, so if I'm going to do something like S trace hello, you're going to see that this one is going to uh, make some calls, uh, some system calls among them we have write, write, and this message get, gets through. So for those of you that may not have this background, a system call is the basic interface that uh, the, the, the operating system provides to applications. So that means whenever an application is going to run, that application is going to um, uh, use this, um, uh, is going to use this uh, uh, approach to um, um, uh, to uh, communicate with the operating system, and uh, when do in doing so, it's going to get uh, the correct behavior. And this one is simply doing some printing. And our goal here is to make this work uh, in bin compat mode. So if you look here, for example, when it, when we do in uh, uh, no no, this is not the one. Sorry. Uh, it should be just a sec. Um, this is actually the native build. Uh, let me see if I have the uh, the bin compat one uh, somewhere. Just a second. Ah, yeah. Uh, I think I have it. Yeah, it's over here, unfortunately. Mm, yeah, I don't like this because this is using the base uh, um, the base system. Uh, let's do it the other way around. So what we have here, I think this is better. Uh, this is the, let's say the base build. Here in the base build, you're going to see uh, we have this that's called a template. This is an application. This application is actually going to be the one that's, uh, that's going to load 
the binary, so the ELF binary, this is an ELF format, and run this with Unicraft. And you're going to see that it says here, okay, load this, and then uh, run the fallback command. We're going to look into this. So what we have here as a fallback, we have this example, which is, yeah, doing this uh, this thing. So for, for this, let's do it like that. Let's uh, create a hello world file. Let's he do hello C. And here I'm going to say include studio.h, oh sorry, and I'm going to say int main void, uh, put s hello world. This is a very simple program oh, uh, that I'm going to use to demo, right? Just a sec. Okay, look. Okay, so uh, now if I build this, Okay, I have this um, uh, this uh, hello binary. It's actually simpler. If I look here, I, I can do it actually inside the Docker file. So I can use this, I can copy hello to hello C, and then this is going to be built here, hello C. And let's call it hello. The result of this is uh, it, we're going to build this as something that's called a static pipe binary. This is the requirement in order to, to when building uh, the binary, if you build it as static pi, pi means position independent executable, that means you can run it everywhere. So, and this is the best case for, uh, for Unicraft. Let's also call this uh, hello, oh, sorry, hello and hello. Okay, so um, what we have here is now we have this craft file uh, that's, that's using the, the application file system is from the Docker file. So it's going to use this to run the hello executable. And I'm going to tell it, yeah, please run the hello executable. Okay, and these they are the configs that I'm, I'm just going to keep. That being said, let's do it like this. So what I'm going to do, do now is I'm going to, um, uh, to build this uh, this Docker file, but I can actually do it like this. I can do mkdir rootfs, and I can move. Uh, no, actually, let me not do it like that. Sorry about this. Uh, rmdir rootfs. Okay. Uh, let me do it uh, like this. Let Let's do craft build, and let's say craft build minus minus plat x86 64 minus minus uh, minus minus arch sorry minus minus plat uh, chemo and when I do this this is going to um, uh, get all the items and now it's going to aim to create the hello executable within the docker binary you can see this is this is running a docker file it's pulling the required bits, which I should have pulled earlier from uh, from GCC. It's going to take a build because it's uh, it's trying to uh, to pull the required uh, items from Docker uh, to build. Uh, if you recall, uh, if we looked here in, let's get back to base. Uh, it's going to pull this GCC 13.2.0 environment and within that it's going to build a hello world C file. So it's it's still pulling it. Yeah, it's it's a while to pull because it's uh, a larger one has 200 megabytes. Uh, it's close to doing that and after it's pulling it is you're going to see it's, go it's going to build the hello uh, hello C binary. Let's wait for that. Okay, is it does it? When we do this, what, what we are now doing is we're basically taking a look behind the scenes. Everything we've done so far using CraftKit and some other items, uh, we're going to now see what's actually happening uh, to that. So the running of the Docker file to build the, the executable, the Linux binary, and then it's going to run that uh, that binary on top of uh, on top of Unicraft. Okay, just a second. I'm not sure what's what is extracting here. A moment. Mm 
Okay, in the meanwhile, I'm going to open up. So now it's building it and something went wrong. Let's see what went wrong. Uh, Hello.c. We did something wrong here. Let's see what we did wrong. Docker file. Ah, it's hello.c.c. Okay, let's try this again. Let's actually do it like that. Let me... Just a sec, catalog for maintainers, utils, uh, bin comp, no, yeah, bin compat, uh, and what is it? No, 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 no. Start build kit, okay. Okay, so let's do it again. Okay, so now it should be built correctly. It's using that build command. It's creating the hello C file. Okay. And now it's going to build the basic, uh, the basic file system. Okay. Let's wait for that a bit. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try something else because my system is pretty loaded. I'm doing a recording. I'm doing a Discord. Uh, it's a laptop. It's overburdened. So let, let me try to connect to a remote system and try all of these items over there. Just a sec. I think that would work better. Okay. Uh, just a sec. Sorry for this. I'm trying to sub my environment. Okay. So we had base. Let me initialize build kit for forever. Yeah, this system was ready to work, but unfortunately, uh, when um, 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 this morning it, it was shut down, there was a power outage. So I think, yeah, this is still building. So maybe we can try this a bit faster here. Let's go to library base. Let's create a hello C file and we're going to do it again. Include sto.h. And then we're going to say int main void and put s hello world. And return zero. And in the Docker file, I'm going to replace fallback with hello. This should be fine. Okay. And let's do a craft build minus minus black q minus minus arch 86 underscore 64 from this directory uh, i did something wrong what did i do wrong uh plat q emo uh, there's an issue i'm too stupid to identify could not determine what or how to build from the given context uh, I may be using a weird version of craft, probably so. Whoops. Okay. Still, we have this over here. So what I did here, this, this, this is the item where we got this base QEMU file created. And this is where the, uh, uh, the initial RAM disk uh, was created from. And when we do this now, if you're going to do, go into QEMU minus uh, kernel, QEMU system, sorry, x86.64, so we're going to run this by hand, and we're going to say run this kernel, uh, minus no graphic, minus CPU max, 
uh, something went wrong. Oops. What the? Let me see what I did wrong. So minus kernel, no graphic. Oops. Let me see what the problem is here. So I have the kernel. These are the output files. The base image is here. The initial RAM disk is here. Let me see what, what it consists of. So it has the hello binary, which is printing hello world. Hmm. Just a sec. There's something fishy. So I'm using this, I'm building the kernel. Let me try to enable KVM to see if that changes anything. No. Uh, just a second. Let me try to see this. Um, So this, oh yeah, this is hello world. Um, Ah, I need to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to mention what is the um, the command to execute, right? I have to run this. Makes sense, sorry for this. So, yeah, whenever, so the, it was starting, but it didn't tell it what do you want to run from, the, from this. So I need to use, once again, do it like this. I need to add this minus minus append hello world. What? Just a sec. So minus 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 kernel. This is weird. What the hell am I doing wrong? CPU max, no graphic kernel. Hmm. I'm stumped. Let me try to see if I'm able to capture what's happening. Why doesn't this work? Um, is craft run running? Craft run minus minus plat chemo minus minus arch sixty four sixty four.
This is very, very, very weird. What's happening with craft? Log level debug, log type basic. Let's see. Minus append. I think there's something that is wrong and I let let me just move into something else. Maybe there's something wrong with the base uh, that base uh, image that we need to fix. And uh, we'll look into that. So let's move here. Let me f let me just do here. Let's try to to build this. So let's do craft build um, minus minus plat Quimu minus minus arch six sixty four. Okay. Let's let's do this kind of fresh for this uh, um, uh, for this uh, uh, application. So for nginx, uh, it build the the root file system. If you're going to look into the um, into the Docker file, this is a, a Docker file that's going to build the uh, nginx uh, file system. This is from here. And if we look in the craft file, the craft file is going to build the uh, nginx from the Docker file, and then it's going to use this uh, user being nginx um, uh, path to run that uh, that binary. Let's look here. So it's it's going to build. It's going to take a, a while, as you saw earlier. Once again, my system is pretty busy, so it's going to take a while for this to. Um, uh, to work. Sorry about that. Probably I should have I should build here some sort of um, Let me try to install a stable version of craft kit here and probably that's going to help uh, with all of this uh, I, I'm using a development version of craft kit and uh, it's probably it probably has its perks This is why uh, it doesn't work properly here let me try this again. Okay, so this one is built. Let's see if this works. Craft run minus minus plat minus minus arch. Um, what the hell? Log type basic minus minus log level debug. Just a second, minus, oh. Um. Okay, so th this way it worked. Okay. This is this is more interesting. Let's try this again. So let's move the hello C file from here. Um, okay, and let's do it like this. We're going to go and uh, build it. So GCC minus wall minus O hello, and let's do it with static pi. 
ls do hello.c static py link so this is okay let's do hello okay and let's put it into a root file system rootfs and here we're going to move hello to rootfs we're going to then in the docker file we're going to say hey we're going to use this directory as the root file system and the command to use is going to be called hello okay so this is basically how we tie in with unicraft to create our own uh, uh, binary application so for that we're going to go now into we're going to build again craft build minus minus plat okay no no build build not run build okay So this is uh, this is not going to build. Uh, there is no need for Docker to be built because because this is uh, now using uh, that directory. So when it says building rootfs is building just it's basically just incorporating the directory. And now let's um, let's wait for that to be built. Yeah, it's gonna go to all the files again. Let's wait for that. Okay, this is built. It's still called Nginx. Now it should be something else because it's going to print hello world. Uh, let's try to, uh, for starters, do a craft run. See how this goes. Okay, so it printed hello world, so this worked. And if I were to run this by hand, I'm going to run it like qemu minus cpu max minus uh, kernel, and I'm going to use unicraft build bay, uh, nginx. It's called nginx because that's what the name I, I, I gave to it. And then I'm going to use um, minus append slash hello, meaning I'm, I'm going to run this executable. Uh, I did something wrong. Cumo system x eighty six sixty four. Uh, no graphic. Okay, and it printed hello world. Uh, something nice. So Im imagine this is something generic. So uh, from this point on, you can actually add the items here. So let's do this. Do something like this. Let's use by dot c. And I'm going to say here by world. Okay, I'm going to build this as um, uh, uh, let's build it with uh, the same GCC. Let's call it by and by.c. And I'm going to copy it here in rootfs. So now in rootfs, uh, sorry, in rootfs, I have two executables by and hello, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this again. Yeah, I know, sorry for a lot of build, te build steps. And what is this going to do? This is going to basically incorporate the uh, both by and hello inside the same, uh, the same image. So we're going to have a larger image with, with both executables. And then it's going to depend on the actual runtime uh, value that I give, which one of them is going to be to get run. So I can add any sort of items here. Imagine I could yeah, add, a, we're going to actually do a Go program. We're going to do a Rust program. We're going to clap them uh, all uh, inside that, uh, that spot. And then we're going, to, uh, we're going to run them. So let's just uh, look at that. In the meanwhile, let's also create those programs. So I don't know that much of a Go. So let's do, we had by hello uh let's say salute and uh ciao so uh, let's say uh, so we have uh ciao ciao dot go and i don't know how a hello world looks in go so i'm going to look here hello world in go just a sec okay so this is the way it should be look like it should look like okay and I'm going to do it here, package main, import format, uh, and I'm going to say ciao. 
okay and i'm going to cheat a bit because i know there's a certain way to build the um, go programs http go docker file so the way is this to create static by binary so i'm going to use that so i'm going to go and say this is going to be chow from chow.go and let's see it's taken a bit to build it wait for it wait for it come on come on whoa it does take its time it may be also because it's building this one yeah we're going to wait to build it again just to incorporate uh, this child binary uh, with a uh, yeah. we have to build it again okay so this is chow let's see file chow static py link so this will be okay chow okay it does this let's copy this also in the root file system so now we have three binaries by chow and hello hello and by are written from c chow is from uh, from um, uh, from go and all of them are elf binaries so all of them i could run on linux uh, what was that chow right and then I'm going to build them again with Unicraft <laughs> I've built this quite a while I know so this is then once again going to build the uh, it, it, it's called nginx by by mistake it should actually be base or something but we had that issue with base everything is built properly um, the root file system is being packed the root file system being those three files that we saw here these are collect uh, these are compressed together in the in the file system image and then we're now going to create create the kernel image for this the actual item that you see here this one this is actually an aggregate of the kernel itself and the root file system so imagine this is 2.3 megabytes in size we're going to see that because uh chow is well 3 megabytes in size this will end up being 5.4 because that size of 3 megabytes has been added here which means that now if i'm going to run this just a sec uh, my terminal my terminal gets bursted when it's cracked when uh, when i run this so this is why whenever you run something with kim we have to use the reset command to start again so if i do hello it runs hello whoa if i do reset sorry for this if i do buy it's going to run the buy executable buy world and if i do chow it's going to run the chow executable chow and this is it right so basically what we have here we have the kernel itself the unicraft kernel that's being able to run these uh mod these binaries that already run on linux you can run them on top of uh unicraft and craftkit facilitates that uh, it's either i'm running uh, i'm running things uh, with qemu or if for example i want to run chow from craftkit i would use here i would say command chow and then I would say craft run minus minus plat qm minus minus arch act64 and this will run that uh, binary and give give me chow right so I can also run by whatever it uh, whatever I, I want so this can happen either directly via qm system or uh, using craft uh, and these commands the the important item is to 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 grasp this idea that what whatever application we want we can have that application from uh a, it's it can be a linux application an unmodified linux binary and then this linux binary i'm going to have the the uh, the capability the ability to run it together with unicraft and yeah this 
discovers uh, what I was uh, aiming to, to detail. We're going to see here in the session, we're going to have uh, some tasks. One of them is going into Hello World, then with Nginx, Redis, Hugo, uh, yeah, this, I, this should be, an, uh, this should be uh, Node and uh, PHP using a custom application and then using uh, your custom uh, um, uh, uh, your uh, you're using the way to, to log system call uh, system calls as they happen these are items you're going to look into to see how they work i know i went a bit fast and also there were these issues that i encountered so i i think i did a sloppy job of giving you these items so I, I would be happy to just spend two or three minutes answering your questions. Maybe just before that, let me just give you a, a couple, a, a walk through a couple of slides I had some time ago prepared, just to give you a bit of a more glimpse uh, on this item. Uh, I think, yeah, this, this should have the slides that I wanted to show you. Hopefully it will work. Okay. Just a second. Yeah, sorry, my laptop is totally unprepared for this kind of uh, delivery with OBS and Discord and the browser with so many stuff. Uh, so. I think I had a slide here. Um, yeah, so what you see here is typically you have the application, uh, we saw it simplified inside the root file system, a directory, but how, how you would want typically to have it is within a Docker file. And then this Docker file gets passed to some system that's called buildkit. And from that buildkit, you get the application file system. And this is the Linux binary files and any you know, sort of other files you require. Then from the craft file, uh, using the Unicraft build system, we build what we call the runtime. This is the kernel. So the kernel, together with the application file system, as we and we're going to see here, right? These are going to be packed inside a given binary. And then I'm, I'm going to run that given binary. And the way this works is the application uh, file itself has some calls to a library function. And then this library function does a system call, this operating system interface. This ends up in the system call shim layer. This one is then calling an internal library and it ends up into the internal Unicraft repo. So this is kind of the, let's say the flow of the application. If, if, if you were to run this on Linux, these items would be removed. So all of those, the, those two areas here, and this would be replaced by Linux. What we do is we hook in here, we capture the system call and redirect that system call to the internal mechanism provided by Unicraft, such that these applications that run on Linux, you would be able to run them unmodified on Unicraft. Okay, I hope I didn't make a total mess of it and there's a level of clarity. So let's just spend two, three minutes to answer any of your questions. I know once again, there are some items that probably aren't well covered. So I do expect you to tell me about that before we move on to the practical side of things. So any questions are welcome. Bala, please. Yeah, that that's it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that, that's what binary compatibility is. You, it's the, the ability to run unmodified Linux binaries on Unicraft. Nothing more and nothing less than that. It's going to become a bit more clear once we go through the through, through the tasks that we have prepared, and there that that's where you can uh, uh, see all of these uh, items happening. Uh, we also get, we're going to have also some um, uh, uh, how do we call them support infrastructure for you, uh, just in case um, you don't have uh, you bump into some issues that we know before. Uh, we're going to have to disable this hardware randomization. I'm going to give you the uh, the input to do that, such that whenever you do the builds, uh, those would work okay for you. I think you're going to have a bit of a struggle at the very beginning if you go to the first tasks, but once those are uh, are done, uh, that should be more than okay. Okay, uh, let me stop the.